Behold, my van three weeks ago. Three weeks. Maybe a little bit more than three weeks. It was, uh, it was, it was May 4th. It was, why did it say three weeks? That's ridiculous. Oh, I'm sorry. Those were the comments. This is from May 4th. That's what the inside of my van looked like. The point of this video, I'm going to give you an update on what's going with the van project, where I want to go with it, and why I just love capitalism. I love capitalism, okay? I am not a laissez-faire capitalist, nor am I a socialist, but I am moderate to center left on economic policy. But what I love about capitalism is that I have no idea how to build a van or convert it, make it something beautiful. I have literally have no idea the first step to take to make that even happen. I look at this van and I'm like, boy, I have no idea. So I turned it over to Diversified Vehicle Services. I think it's the name. Sorry, Neil, if I'm getting it wrong, but I'll, I'll, show, I'll, I'll put a link to their Instagram. And he started doing the work. And, and this is what we, be, we started with. This is one of the first update pictures. So um, I'm going to go through some of the updates, talk about the plan. What we're going to be doing with the, with the van, for, the, for now, it's going to be me. And there's a couple other people that I may be bringing with. The goal is I'm going to be able to work from the van the same way I'm doing right now because we've got a rig set up, which I'm going to show you in a second, along with another person. And I'm going to be launching my third channel. I'm probably going to do this much to the, to, to the disappointment of gamers. There's a channel connected to these channels called Timcast Games. I'm probably going to change that to an on the ground, real conversations channel. I'm going to take the van on the road. I'm going to be producing these same videos like I always do every day on the same schedule, but there will be a new channel dedicated specifically to sitting at the table and talking with people about their ideas and politics. So it'll be a very much kind of like real conversations, change my mind kind of thing. I'm not, uh, in terms of like change my mind, like Steven Crowder does, I'm not that kind of person. I'm not really here to debate people. You know, there'll, there will be pushback if someone's got something wrong. I'll say, well, hold on, you know, actually according, you know, and, and I'll always try to like pull up the facts on the phone, but I think it'll be interesting to have these conversations. So here's the thing. That's what it looked like. We then had an update. Uh, there's a, vi- uh, I don't know what that is. There's an update here where the siding got put in. You can see there's the foam and um, some work was being done. The trim or the, the, the siding was being put in. Another amazing update was this is a water heater with a water tank behind it. And this is the electrical system. It's not all of it. There's inverters that are now in, in other places, but there's going to be solar power, which we have on the roof and an air conditioner. And so I was told that um, air conditioner, like I've watched a ton of videos where they said air conditioners don't necessarily work, but I don't, I, I guess this guy knows his business. He knows what he's doing. And he said, don't, don't worry about it. We got this. So we've got a ton of uh, uh, power. There's also another thing that we're going to be adding to the roof. Uh, actually, let me stop here and say one of the reasons why I'm, I'm making this video now is it's going to be done in the next few days. Wait till you see the last photo. If you didn't go on my Instagram already and see it, you're going to be like, wow. And when it is done, we're going to make a full van tour video explaining everything. It's probably going to be a pretty damn long video. I don't plan on editing or anything. So uh, Neil, who's making the van, will show, show, show us around and explain, you know, how everything is put together and, uh, you know, what it can do, why, why he chose the certain things he did. It was 99% designed by uh, Neil. Uh, and I kind of just like said, here's what I'm looking for. What can you do? So these are the solar panels, as you're seeing. This was an update from six days ago. It's a photo of the shower, which is in. I don't expect to be using the shower all that often, but it's really important because there will be periods where we're in like, I don't know, the panhandle of Oklahoma or something. And if we're literally in the middle of nowhere, got to have a shower, got to have a shower. The van is not for living. I'm being facetious when I say I will live in a van down by the river. The the shower is more of like... um, you know, you got to have it. So th- there is going to be a gray water and a black wa- water system. You will be able to use the toilet and do your business. There's going to, the, the, the curtain pops out, extending the length that you will have when you're sitting down taking care of business. And this uh, shower head, it's going to have hot water. It's going to be epic. And there's a gray water system, um, which, you know, we can go through. Actually, you can, you can see the, the water pipes, you know, going through here. So this is the workstation. And I've got a couple photos here and I'll explain, you know, how I work. I have multiple monitors right now in front of me. There's two monitors. And this desk can actually go up and down to open up space. And the TV has full range of motion. You can see that it can move, you know, in any direction. We've got power outlets. We've got USB. And we've got this uh, this here table. And then um, I don't know if I have a photo. Okay, I guess not. But it can go flush up against the wall. You've got some controllers here. I actually haven't checked out the latest on this yet. But, uh, you know, so I, I there's probably a bunch of stuff in here that I haven't seen. But this was the latest update. Look at that. Tell me that is not beautiful and going to be very much exciting. 
So let me, let me, let me just lightly say like why I like uh, capitalism. All of this was done while I did my work. Okay. I'm sitting here talking to the camera every day, doing research. I have no idea how to begin to put a shower in a van. That seems so foreign and ridiculous to me. Like you, you could literally come up to me and say, put a shower in a van. And I'd be like, I literally don't know what the first thing to do is. Granted, I could figure it out in a few months, depending on what my resources were. But to be able to go to somebody and say, I'm going to do work for which I will receive green pictures of dead presidents. You do this, and then I will give you green pictures of dead presidents. Doesn't that make so much sense? I had a conversation with someone on Twitter about socialism. It was actually like the British Socialist Party or something. And I explained, like, what if I want, like, under communism, what if I wanted to build a car? And they said, well, then you just go build it. And I'm like, right, but where would I get the parts? And they'd be like, from the factory. And I'm like, why would they choose to give me the parts and not someone else? Parts are finite. And they said, well, they'll have to figure out a system to get that to work. And I said, would I be able to own the car after I build it? And they're like, that's your personal property. You can personally own this. I said, okay, so we have to figure out now before any of this can be implemented, why should I be given access to the finite amounts of resources in these factories and not someone else? And they said, well, you know, they'll figure it out in the future, I guess. That's, that's kind of worrisome. They'll, they'll figure it out. Well, why are you proposing a, an economic system that you haven't figured out yet? We're not going to put some ha- half-baked plan in, into play. The other issue I had was, okay, I am not a mechanic. I'd like to, to build a car for fun, but I don't know the first thing. You know what that means? They would never give me the parts. The communist factor would be like, you are the last person who's going to be in line for these parts. Sorry, but guess what? In our glorious capitalist system, and I'm not talking about crooked, crony, uh, corrupt capitalism. I'm talking about the literal uh, private enterprise, the ability to take money for yourself and control it. Most of it, you know, I still believe in, uh, in, in I'm, I'm a social liberal, but I can take that money and I can do with it as I choose. I'm not a big taxationist theft person. Forgive me. Um, you, can, you can take some of the money you receive and use it as you choose. The government does take some. I'm not entirely on board with what the government does with tax money, but that's a different conversation. Going too far and the government seizing your resources just collapse. Everything falls apart. You can't go. You can't do it. So here. So anyway, like I don't know. Let's show some more pictures. But the point is, all of this that was done is being done by somebody while I do my work, and my work is being converted into resources for someone else to produce something. Isn't it that simple? So this is where the bed's going to go. And it's going to be like the, the, the hardest crappy bed. I like sleeping on the floor. I'm, I have no stress about it. And so th- there's going to be cushion and stuff. It's just going to be not like a legit mattress because I don't like them. I grew up sleeping on couches. We've got some cabinets up here and uh, not, not too much headroom. But you can see from the other photo, the, the goal with turning the monitor is that you can watch movies while you're you, you know in bed. I'm going to have like a PlayStation. It's going to be so epic playing PlayStation in the middle of nowhere. I want to add something too in, in my travels. My, a lot of people don't know this. And I am, I, to me, it's kind of an epic thing. When I was in Fukushima, I was, I was in the no-go zone of Fukushima, the red zone, the full-on wiped out, destroyed buildings and, you know, radiation. And it was like, you can't be there without a suit and protection. I was playing Hearthstone on my phone. It's a, it's a, it's a card game. It's, a, it's the World of Warcraft card game. I have to imagine, you know, whoever I played against, they had no idea that the place I was in, there was like very few people. It was extremely dangerous, but we had like downtime. There was a, um, the, the camera guy I was working with was getting some B-roll and like talking to our, our fixer, person who guides us around. And I'm sitting there playing video games. How amazing. I'm going to be playing, you know, like Overwatch or some, you know, first person shooter. And they're going to have no idea that I'm sitting up in the mountains. Now, um, let's, go, let's go through these photos real quick. There's one more. So you can see there's the monitor flush. I thought I had a photo. This desk, actually, you can pull it up and it clicks in place and then you could lift it up and put it back down to open up room. Uh, it's going to be awesome. We're going to be on the road soon and I'm going to be putting together like a, a, a full series traveling. I don't know exactly when because we're setting up the mines office soon, but I will do this. One of the biggest challenges outside of what we have so far is getting data in the van. And because I upload something like 10 gigs per day, I kid you not, that it becomes really, really challenging. Most phone plans will give you like 20 gigs per month. I think AT&T gives you unlimited, but it's 10 bucks per, per, per gig after that, which means that's going to be really expensive every month. If I'm doing 10 gigs you know, per day, I'm going to blow out my, my, my data plan in two days. And then it's literally going to be what, like a hundred bucks a day for third. That's, that's a ridiculous amount of money. So I got to figure out how to do this. Now, T-Mobile and Verizon just throttle you. But if I'm in the middle of nowhere, 
there's no there's not gonna be any throttling because throttling occurs when you're in a congested area. They deprioritize you over others. So I think it'll be fine. But rest assured, I will be using a ton of data. So here's what we found. I don't know if it's the right solution, but this is the WineGuard Connect 2.0 long range Wi-Fi extender and 4G LTE. I've heard some eh things about it. You can see on this, at least Google, it's got, uh, it's like 50%, 2.5 out of 5. Only two reviews. People aren't super happy with it. And I've talked to some people who are experts in cell technology and things, and they said they didn't think it was going to be that great. But you know what? Might as well get it. Mostly because it's a Wi-Fi extender, which means if I'm in a semi-urban place, I might be able to catch that Starbucks Wi-Fi or hotel Wi-Fi or something that I could, they could probably use. And there are certain memberships you can get for like hotspots around the country. And there's also like, I don't know how Google Fi would work on this. But anyway, you know, that's, that's kind of the plan. Uh, mini rant on, on capitalism, I guess. I just wanted to show the current state of things because I'm going to be putting up a full van tour probably this week. And so get ready. It's going to be awesome. You can see the photos at Instagram.com slash Timcast. Follow me if you haven't already. I just felt like making kind of this random video. Maybe you didn't like it, but whatever. Uh, I'll see you at 4 p.m. on the main channel, and we'll get back to some serious politics and news.